make a good thing bad. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fake songs from TV. Freaking friends, freaking friends, till we come to bed and we're freaking friends. For this list, we're looking at the best tunes written for and performed by characters, fictional artists, or bands on the small screen. What's your favorite track made by a fake musically inclined artist? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Supernova Girl, Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. Putting me in overdrive, speed of light, I'm so alive. Could you be my supernova girl? Even though she's from the far off year of 2049, Xenon is just like any other teen girl. She gets crushes, loves to hang out with her friends, and is obsessed with the teen pop star of her era, Protozoa. Protozoa is a part of the 21st century pop rock group Microbe, who perform their hit song Supernova Girl at the end of the film. With space-themed lyrics and a repetitive chorus, this track might be a little corny to some, but like most songs from Disney Channel original movies, it's still an entertaining earworm that's difficult not to sing along to. Number 9. Poor Thing, Degrassi, The Next Generation. This song may be from a teen drama, but its subject is decidedly adult. In Shout Parts 1 and 2, Paige Michaelchuk is assaulted at a party. It's a shocking plot development, and the show's handling of its aftermath stands out among the many harrowing storylines on Degrassi. Paige is initially hesitant to tell people about what happened, only confiding in her best friend. But when her bandmate Ashley suggests that they perform a song about sexual violence for a competition, she finds herself unable to keep it to herself. I keep trying to forget, but I can't. He's the end of my nightmare. Paige tells her the truth and ends up leading a powerful performance of the song titled Poor Thing in front of her attacker. Her band loses the contest, but audiences could still take comfort in watching her take her first steps towards recovery. Number 8. My Shiny Teeth and Me The Fairly Odd Parents. I'd be nothing without my teeth which is why I dedicated a whole song to them. Dental hygiene doesn't seem like a topic that would lend itself to a good teen pop song, but this animated hit had kids across America singing about the importance of flossing, before flossing was a dance move. In the world of the Fairly Odd Parents, this anthem to Ivory's, aptly titled My Shiny Teeth and Me, is sung by Chip Skylark, who acts as a parody of boy band performers. Those bones in my jaw that don't have a flaw, my shiny teeth and me. Ironically, the character is actually voiced by former NSYNC member Chris Kirkpatrick, which explains how songs like Shiny Teeth are so catchy and authentically boy band in spite of their somewhat silly lyrics. Shiny teeth, I love them, and they all love me. But should I talk to you when I've got 32? Woo! Shiny teeth and me. Shiny teeth, shiny teeth. Number 7. A Little Bit Alexis, Schitt's Creek. Auditioning for the lead role in Cabaret is a big deal, even if it's just a local production. Although Alexis is urged not to try out, she shows up anyway and performs her own song, A Little Bit Alexis, at the audition. I'm a Lamborghini. I'm a Hollywood star. I'm a little bit tipsy when I drive my car. Drawing inspiration from 2000s pop stars like Britney Spears and Paris Hilton, the tune has a catchy, if generic, beat but its lyrics leave a lot to be desired, eventually devolving into a repeated la, 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 la. chorus. Fortunately, its low-effort lyrics just make it all the more enjoyable and hilariously in character. The tune quickly became a hit on TikTok and even inspired a parody song performed by Alexis actress Annie Murphy and Kelly Clarkson titled A Whole Lot of Texas. La, la, la. Number 6. Wrong Song, Nashville Generational conflict is a tale as old as time. 
Nashville decided to highlight this classic dynamic within the world of country music through its protagonists, Raina James and Juliet Barnes. It's just that the Ryman stage is a place where Tammy Wynette has played and Patsy Cline and people go there to make history. That's how we should be thinking about this. In an early episode of the series, Raina agrees to duet with the younger musician on the Ryman stage, not anticipating what a headache it would be to choose a song suited to both of their styles. After some deliberation, the pair decided to collaborate on an original song, which they called Wrong Song. The number is an empowering anthem about a woman who refuses to accept her cheating partner back into her life, and directly riffs on classic country songs that suggest women do the opposite. Number 5. 5,000 Candles in the Wind – Parks and Recreation Up in horsey heaven, here's a thing You trade your legs for angels' wings Lil Sebastian's size was miniature, but the love his town had for him was anything but Lil. When the famed equine died unexpectedly, the people of Pawnee were devastated, and a memorial service was set up on his behalf. Good night, little Sebastian. Forever. Naturally, Andy Dwyer's band Mouse Rat headlined the event with an original song titled 5,000 Candles in the Wind. As per Leslie's instructions, it was like Elton John's Candle in the Wind, but 5,000 times better. were pretty straightforward in their memorialization of Lil Sebastian, but the song managed to be a big hit anyway, leading to an unprecedented amount of CD sales for an amateur musician. Number 4. Look at us now, Honeycomb, Daisy Jones and the Six. Okay, let's get this uh, started. This is Honeycomb, take one. Before Daisy Jones and the Six was a series, it was a best-selling novel. And with that positively reviewed title came some hefty expectations. Look at Us Now, also known as Honeycomb, was the song that catapulted the fictional band at the story's center to stardom, and held deep meaning for both of its protagonists. It needed to sound like a surefire hit and have lyrics that accurately represented both Billy's life prior to the series and his eventual relationship with Daisy Jones. Thankfully, the people behind the Amazon adaptation hit it out of the park with their version, which changes the lyrics of the book's version of Honeycomb. Look at Us Now is as emotional as it is iconic, and the show's first and last performances of the song act as perfect bookends to the series' central relationship. Number 3. Corn Puddin' – Schmigadoon Corn Puddin', what's that? What? Are you trying to tell me that you've never heard of Corn Puddin'? Since its premiere in 2021, Schmigadoon has featured a number of entertaining tunes, many of which were sung by legendary Broadway performers. Of all these songs, only one has had the honor of winning an Emmy, Corn Puddin'. My gal loves Corn Puddin', she eats it constantly. Sometimes I get to wondering, does she love it more than me? Does she love it more than me? Although its title may not sound like an award winner, the comedic song wears its classic musical inspirations on its sleeve, and brilliantly sets up the dynamic of the series' two protagonists with the strange town of Schmigadoon. The song is also just a ton of fun, so much so that when the ensemble starts their corn puddin' chant, it's hard not to want to sing along. That is, unless you're Josh. Did somebody say corn puddin'? Corn. That's it, we're leaving. Corn. Okay, well that one's on you. Number 2. Smelly Cat – Friends Soft Kitty is cute and Marshall's songs about cat sitting and How I Met Your Mother are darkly comedic, but when it comes to fictional songs about feline friends, nothing can truly top Smelly Cat. S smelly Cat, Smelly Cat. Better. Yeah, yeah, that's better. The iconic original song from Friends originated in the episode The One with the Baby on the Bus, 
and quickly became a running gag on the show when it was clear the song was a hit. And why wouldn't it be? The simplistic pop folk song sung by Phoebe is the perfect ode to pungent felines everywhere, reassuring them that it's not their fault. Smelly cat, smelly cat, it's not your fault. <laughs> After Friends finale, Lisa Kudrow has continued to occasionally perform the whimsical song in real life, duetting with the likes of Taylor Swift and Lady Gaga. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Werewolf Bar Mitzvah, 30 Rock. Before Childish Gambino, Donald Glover performed on the full version of this Halloween classic. Look at this, and my gold record from that novelty party song. Werewolf Bar Mitzvah, spooky, scary, boys becoming men, men becoming wolves. Gitchy Gitchy Goo, Phineas and Ferb. This one-hit wonder was such a hit that it directly influenced the show's subsequent setup. Princess Valhalla, United States of Terra, the original Brie Larson superhero. Take a hint, Victorious, a universally relatable anthem about unwanted flirtations. Get your hands off my hips, for a punch you in the lips, stop your staring at my head. Hey. Take a hint, take a hint, though you can't buy me a drink, let me tell you how to think, I think you could use a mint. Take a hint, take a hint, to take a hint, take a hint. Pinot Noir, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Titus Andromedon's catchy and confident ode. Pinot Noir, you're a star. Listen to Tom Bering Jar. Pinot Noir, Rose and Bar. Pinot Noir. Au revoir. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Let's go to the mall. How I Met Your Mother How I Met Your Mother isn't necessarily known for being a musical show, but when they do a musical number, they go all out. And who could blame them? Especially with a guy as talented as Neil Patrick Harris at their disposal to perform shockingly entertaining songs about suits. It's a truth you can't refuse. Nothing suits me like a suit. Ironically, though, the show's best song isn't by the Tony Award winning actor. It's by Kobe Smulders. In Slap Bet, it's revealed that Robin has a hidden past as a teenage pop star. Her song, Let's Go to the Mall, is shown to the audience, and it's just as delightfully 80s and Canadian as one would hope. Sure, it was actually released in 1993, but according to Robin, that's exactly when the 80s came to Canada. The 80s didn't come to Canada till like 93. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. 